Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the very first learning session of the National Wages and Productivity Commission via Zoom. So, for the information of everyone, for those who haven't um, made it to our um, Zoom, you may access our Facebook um, Live via um, the National Wages and Productivity Commission's Facebook page. So, sa mga kaibigan po natin na hindi nakapasok dito sa Facebook Live, kung meron kayo mga friends na hindi nakapasok, punta lang po sila doon sa ating Facebook Live. So, um, for today, um, ito po yung kauna-unahang session namin sa Zoom. So, gaya nung sinabi ko po kanina, yung ating learning session before, we conducted um, our learning session via physical setting. So, medyo momentous po ang event na ito. And um, as of yesterday, meron po kaming 3,000 participants na nag-registered and um, only 500 were allowed to um, sign in dito sa ating YouTube, uh, sorry, sa ating Zoom. So, um, let's start. But before that, um, let's have our uh, reminders. So, because we are on a webinar mode, we will turn off your videos and audios while the session is ongoing to minimize interruption. So, as much as possible, we also want this um, learning session to be as interactive as possible. So, please answer the poll questions as well as yung ating mga trivia questions later that will be flashed on your screens. Um, Q&A and chat boxes are available for your question, comments, or feedback. So at the end of this session, we will also have our evaluation forms, which will be um, posted doon sa ating chat box. So kindly complete lang yung evaluation form to get a copy of your certificate. Okay, let me introduce um, the members of my team. So hindi nyo sila nakikita ngayon, pero sila yung behind um, this learning session. So we have Liza for the IAC materials and BAM for the certificates. Boom will um, answer your questions via chat box. And for our um, Zoom hosting, we have Edward and Arlo. So, but before that, um, gusto namin malaman kung sino ba yung mga participants namin dito sa aming learning session. Sino yung mga lucky participants natin? So, we want um, you to type doon sa ating chat box kung um, saan po kayo nararoon ngayon at kung ano po yung pinagkakaabalahan nyo ngayon. Kung kayo po ba ay um, part ng HR, kung kayo po ba ay nasa, um, kung kayo ay self-employed, kung kayo ay nasa government or nasa private. So, please answer lang po doon sa ating chat. Sige, para magkaroon ng idea yung ating speaker. Sige, ah, oh, so marami so far yung nakikita natin na uh, HR. So, meron from Cebu. Okay. Merong HR from Welders Testing Lab. So, karamihan sa mga participants natin, base sa nakikita ko ay mga HR, nasa HR na field. So, yun. So, probably sila talaga yung sumusunod dun sa ating um, mga announcement sa Facebook. Okay. Sige. We also have lawyers dito sa ating um, chat. Okay. Sige. We have participants from General Trias. Government daw siya. From the government um, service. Okay. Sige. Um, yung ganitong activity ginagawa din namin ito sa, ano, sa learning session namin sa physical setting. So, inaalam namin kung saan galing yung mga participants para alam namin kung sino yung kakausapin namin dun sa aming presentation. Okay. Meron ding um, doctor, um, si Dr. Jerome Paler. Okay. Sige. Um, so, again, welcome sa aming learning session. Papahilala ko rin pala yung aking sarili. Ako si Jerome Lujas mula sa Planning and Information Division ng National Wages and Productivity Commission. So, um, base sa profile ng mga participants natin, most of you are from HR na field and meron din from the government and um, um, some participants from, karamihan nakita ko from, ano eh, from mm, Makati and um, Region 4A. So, meron din freelancers. Yan. So, maganda na active yung mga participants natin dito. No? So, later, um, please uh, maximize din yung ating chat box for your questions. Okay. 
Sige. We would also like to launch today our um, YouTube channel. So um, let me um, walk you through our uh, Facebook channel. So we would like to request everyone to go to your um, YouTube um, sites. So all you have to do is to type in the um, search engine youtube.com and kapag nakapag-sign in na kayo, you may try to sign in and you may type national wages and productivity commission. So, and then makikita niyo po dito yung logo ng NWTC and please subscribe doon sa aming channel dahil dito po namin ipopost yung aming mga videos na um, gaya ng mga learning session namin. So, kung hindi nyo masusundan yung aming learning session, di kayo makapasok sa aming mga registration. Um, dito namin ipopost yung aming mga videos. Also, um, yung aming iba pang mga events and promotional materials. Okay. So, let me go again to my slide. Okay. So, for our um, learning session today, ito yung ating magiging flow. There will be a presentation from our speaker and then Q&A na tayo. So, dun sa Q&A, we will um, get your questions dun sa ating Q&A na um, box sa baba or sa ating chat box. So, um, ngayong nararanasan natin yung pandemic, very challenging ito para sa ating lahat, particularly sa mga workers and employers. So, at this point, gusto namin na-inform yung ating mga workers and employers about sa mga programs ng Department of Labor and Employment, particularly sa EC program. That is why our first learning session is about the compensability of COVID-19 under the EC program. So let me introduce our speaker for today. Who will tackle yung um, Employees' Compensation Commission? Sino ba si ECC? Um, ano ba yung compensability of COVID-19 and other diseases? And um, compensability of injuries as well as benefits and services under the EC program. So without further ado, let me introduce our speaker who is a public relations officer for from the Employees' Compensation Commission. Let us all welcome Mr. Alvin C. Garcia. Hi, Alvin. Hi, Jerome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Alvin. Good afternoon. Okay naman yung audio ko. No? It's loud and clear. Okay, I'm yes, just clearing my screen. Okay, so hi, everyone. Good afternoon. First of all, before I start with my presentation about the ECC and the EC program, we'd like to thank the NWPC, headed by E.D. Chris, and of course, uh, with his team, Kila Jerome, DED, Patty, DED, Jane, for initiating this webinar for all our employees and employers who are interested to know more about the EC program. So maraming maraming salamat for organizing this learning session sa ating mga empleyado. Okay? Uh, so this will be my presentation outline this afternoon for everyone. I'll be introducing to you our office, our agency, the Employees' Compensation Commission. I'll be tackling as well the Employees' Compensation Program. Then I will be discussing the compensable contingencies. What are the diseases? What are the injuries that are compensable or covered under the EC program? Then the benefits and the services that we give to all our employees who suffer from work-related contingencies and our contact information if you have further questions and clarifications about the things that I will be discussing this afternoon. Okay, so before I formally start, we have a poll question. Tama ba, Jerome? So, Siguro, let's up our first poll question para at least malaman natin kung aware ba yung mga employees natin, yung mga participants natin about the EC program. How many uh, from them uh, have an idea already of what the ECC is, what the EC program is, di ba? So makita natin to sa poll, uh, sa poll area, you just need to answer if you are aware of the ECC or the EC program, just uh, let us know by answering yes if alam natin and no kung hindi po natin alam. Okay, so do we have the result na? From our... 
Okay, so all right, this this is actually uh, good news kay to paano sa amin kasi based from the responses of this from the responses of our participants, 71% are aware already of what the ECC is, of what the EC program is. Diba? Then we have 29% na hindi pa familiar kung ano si ECC at kumpara sa new EC program. Okay? So I'll be discussing uh, siguro kahit pa na in-depth uh, uh, and I'll be giving an in-depth discussion of what the EC program is. Alright, so let's start. Sino nga ba si ECC? Si ECC is actually a government corporation or yung tinatawag po natin na GOCC. A lot of times, whenever employees and employers hear about ECC or the EC program, ang lagi po kapasok sa isipan natin is kami si DOLE or kami si SSS in the private sector or GSIS in the public sector. At gusto po namin klaruhin yun sa lahat. Okay? ECC is a totally different agency from the three agencies that I mentioned. It's just that for DOLE, ang connection namin is we are an attached agency of DOLE for policy coordination and guidance. And for the two systems naman, SSS and GSIS, sila po yung listering agencies ng ECC for the processing of claims ng mga employees natin for the EC program. But the benefits, the services that we give, they are totally different from the two systems. Okay? So I hope klaro yun sa ating lahat. Okay? Kung titignan din natin sa so slide ko na pinapakita sa inyo lahat, sa lahat na pinapakita ko sa inyo ngayon, ECC was created in 1974 through PD626 as amended or the Employees Compensation and State Insurance Fund. So for more than four decades now, 45 years to be exact, si ECC na sa government service na, okay? And the sad fact here is a lot of employees, a lot of employers are still not aware of our existence and us not knowing na may ECC pala, may EC program pala ang gobyerno para sa atin. It defeats the purpose of the program kasi we don't get to avail the benefits, we don't get to avail our rights, the services na meron tayo under such program just because we are not aware of its existence, di ba? So sabi nga namin, napaka-importante lagi na tayong mga empleyado dapat, we are not just well-versed of the work that we do. Dapat alam din natin, ano ba yung mga ahensya ng gobyerno? Ano ba yung mga programa ng gobyerno na nagbibigay proteksyon, nagbibigay uh, beneficyo, servisyo sa ating mga magagawang Filipino? Okay? So we say sa mga assignments dapat natin sa trabaho. Okay? So ECC is also a quasi-judicial corporate entity created to implement the Employees' Compensation Program. I'll discuss further kung paano nag-work yung quasi-judicial function ni ECC. Okay, so these are the main functions of our commission, of our agency. One is to formulate policies and guidelines for the improvement of the EC program, review appeal DC claims disapproved by the two systems, and initiate policies and programs towards adequate accident prevention in the workplace, okay? By the way, ECC is also one of the social security institutions of our country. And when we say social security institutions, ano ba yung mga agensya ng gobyerno na kasama dito? Di ba we have SSS, we have GSIS, kasama rin po doon si uh, Pag-ibig at si PhilHealth. Kahanay actually ng mga agensya ng gobyerno na to si ECC. Okay? So isa rin kaming social security institution ng bansa natin, ng gobyerno natin na nagbibigay benepisyo at serbisyo sa lahat ng magagawang Filipino. It's just that nagkakaiba-iba nga lang kami ng mga mandato. Okay? Alright. And this is our mandate. To implement the Employees' Compensation Program or yung EC Program, ECP na tinatawag natin. Ano nga ba yung ECP? ECP is a government program designed to provide employees and their families with income benefits, medical, and other benefits in the event of work-connected sickness, injury, or death. Okay? So pagdating kay ECC, ang tatandaan lang natin lagi is the highlighted text, which is work connected. Okay? So para makapag-avail tayo ng benefits, makapag-claim tayo ng services ni ECC, dapat yung contingency na nangyari sa atin, whether sickness siya or injury, it must be work connected. It must be work related. Okay? If it's not work connected, then you only get to avail benefits from SSS, Pag-ibig, PhilHealth, or GSIS. But if it's work connected, then there's another set of benefits that you can avail under the EC program. Alright, so sino ba yung mga covered or kasama sa programa ni ECC? Since we have, uh, yeah, we have another poll question, no? Pala. So let's, uh, uh, let us know kung gaano karami yung nasa private sector sa mga participants natin ngayon versus 
those working in the public sector. Maybe we can up now our second poll question. So our second poll question is what sector do you belong to? Are you from the public sector or from the private sector? Okay, so let's give them a few seconds to answer. Our poll question. Okay, so do we have the answer now? Oh, okay, so 87% of our participants are from the private sector, then 13% are from the public sector. Okay, so yeah, we ask this question kasi medyo magkakaiba nga lang. Yung way of availing uh, the benefits under the EC program pagdating sa private sector at sa public sector. All right, so it discuss ko yan later. Okay, just so you know, in the private sector, lahat po ng mandatory members ng SSS, including OFWC base, at yung mga kasambahays po natin, kasama po sila sa programa ni ECC. Okay? So lahat ng merong employee-employer relationship na tinatawag natin, automatic, they are covered and members of the EC program as well. Marami nagtatumong sa amin, may iba bang registration for ECC? Ang sagot po, wala. Okay, so ngayon wala po. Okay? Yung second item, you can see it's still in red, yung self-employed and land-based OFWs natin. Kasi previously, they are not covered under the EC program, yung mga self-employed and land-based OFWs natin. But uh, I think it was second quarter, third quarter la last year when our uh, chairman, Dole Secretary Bello, signed the inclusion or expansion of the EC coverage to self-employed members. Okay, so... Anytime soon, we're just finalizing the system with SSS. Pwede na rin pong mag-apply, mag-register yung mga self-employed members natin to EC program. And for the OFW land base naman, we are still finalizing the guidelines. So, maghintay lang po tayo ng update kung kailan uh, exactly tayo makapag-start, mag-register para sa EC program. Okay? So, that's for the private sector. And for the public sector naman, Lahat po ng mandatory members ng GSIS, automatic covered din po ni ECC, okay? Even our uniform personnel such as the AFP, PNP, the BJMP, the BFP, and the Philippine Coast Guard, okay? A lot of our uniform personnel thought na nung umalis sila kay GSIS, hindi na rin sila kasama sa coverage ni ECC. At yun po yung gusto natin ipaalam sa kanila ngayon na kahit na wala na, Sa GSIS, yung mga uniform personnel natin, covered pa rin po sila ng EC program. So kung may mangyari sa kanila and it's work connected, then entitled pa rin po sila to avail and claim their benefits, their rights under the EC program. Okay, so who pays the EC contribution? Ito yung lagi namin tinatanong kung kilala talaga natin si ECC. Okay? Every time actually I discuss uh, ECC sa physical setup, a lot of employees, a lot of my participants says, sila yung nagbabayad. Paano sila yung nagbabayad? Nakikita niyo ba sa payslip niya yung payment for ECC? Then nag-start na sila to wonder, o nga, na hindi namin nakikita. Parang ganon. Kasi, it's not the employee's responsibility to pay for their EC contribution. Responsibility po ng mga employers natin na bayaran yung EC premium contribution ng mga empleyado nila. Okay? In the private sector, our employers, they pay 10 peso per worker per month if the salary of the employee is below 14,750 pesos. And 30 pesos per worker per month naman if it's more than 14,750 pesos. For the public sector, it's 100 pesos per worker per month regardless of the monthly salary range of the employee or the SG level ni employee natin. Probably this is also one of the reasons kung bakit karamihan sa ating mga empleyado hindi alam si ECC kasi hindi natin siya nakikita sa mga payslips natin. Hindi natin hindi tayo kinakaltasan for our EC premium contribution. It's actually like a free social insurance of ECC together with your employer para sa mga empleyado just in case may mangyari sa atin because of work. Okay? So I hope that is clear sa ating lahat. Alright, before I proceed with my uh, presentation, let's watch this video clip uh, about the compensability of, compensability of injuries and diseases under the EC program. Nagkasakit o na-aksidente ka sa work? Oh no! Buti na lang, andyan ang ECC. 
ang ECC o Employees Compensation Commission ay ang government agency na nagpapatupad ng ECP o Employees Compensation Program. Ito ay karagdagang benefits in case ikaw ay magkasakit o maaksidente dahil sa work. Pero kahit may ECC, laging tatandaan na safety should still be your top priority. Kaya nga ba maaaring mag-file at mag-claim ng ECP benefits? Number one, kung ikaw ay naaksidente sa workplace. Number two, kung ikaw ay naaksidente habang nagtatrabaho. Number three, kung ikaw ay naaksidente kahit wala ka sa workplace dahil sa utos ng boss mo. Number four, kung ikaw ay naaksidente papunta o pauwi galing trabaho, pwede ka mag-claim ng ECP benefits kung walang diversion sa ruta mo papunta o pauwi. Dapat ay bahay, work o work, bahay lang. Number five, pwede ka rin mag-claim ng ECP benefits kung ikaw ay naaksidente habang sakay ng company vehicle. Number six, counted pa rin kung ikaw ay naaksidente sa activities ng company. Halimbawa, sa mga company team building at sports fest. At last but not the least, kung ikaw ay nakaranas ng asot habang ginagampanan mo ang trabaho mo. Kapag ikaw naman ay nagkasakit dahil sa trabaho, pwede ka mag-claim ng ECP benefits kung ang conditions of compensability ay nasatisfied mo base sa listahan ng occupational and work-related diseases. Pag ang sakit mo ay di kasama sa listahan, pwede pa rin ito maging compensable sa ilalim ng tinatawag natin na increased risk theory. Una, kung ang working conditions ay may health risk na nagiging sanhi ng sakit. Pangalawa, kung ang sakit ay nakuha mo dahil exposed ka sa mga health risk na ito. At pangatlo, kung nagkasakit ka kahit na sinusunod mo naman ang safety measures and precaution ng kumpanya. Samantala, meron naman tayong tinatawag na accepting circumstance o yung mga pagkakataon na hindi ka pwede mag-claim ng easy benefits. Kung ikaw ay lasing o lang mo sa alak o drugs habang nagtatrabaho at naaksidente ka, no, no, no yan. Hindi ka rin pwede mag-claim ng ECP kung ikaw ay nagpabaya o notoriously negligent ka kaya ka na aksidente o nagkasakit. Halimbawa ay ang hindi pagsunod sa safety precautions ng kumpanya o hindi pagsukot ng protective gear. Hindi rin valid ang claim kung sinasadya mong sakla ng sarili mo o ang iba na naging sanhi ng aksidente o sakit. Bad yun! Laging tandaan na safety should always be your first priority kahit saan, kahit kailan, kahit sa trabaho. Kapag aksidente di maiwasan, don't worry, andyan ang ECC to help you. For more information, pumunta lang sa pinakmalapit na ECC office sa inyong lugar. Remember, kahit may ECC, lagi ka pa rin mag-ingat ha? Nagkasakit? Okay, so as mentioned in, uh, the, in the video, not all diseases are compensable under the ECC program. Tangin yung mga sakit ko na nakuha dahil sa trabaho or sa working condition or working environment na meron tayo, yun yung pumapasok under the EC program, yun yung binabayaran ni ECC. Okay? So ECC came out with uh, the 32 list of compensable occupational diseases. Okay? Uh, this list of diseases uh, nasama sa uh, listahan natin kasi there's a high presumption already na yung mga sakit na to nakuha talaga sa trabaho or sa working condition ng mga employees natin, ng mga, ng mga, uh, ng, sa kumpanya natin, parang gano'n, okay? But in the event, for example, na yung sakit natin, it's not included in the list uh, of occupational diseases, pwede pa rin tayo mag-file at mag-claim ng easy benefits through uh, the increased risk theory na tinatawag po natin, okay? Yung increased risk theory natin, ang gusto sabihin po nito, dapat ma-establish natin yung causal connection, yung sakit natin sa trabaho na ginagawa natin or sa working condition na meron tayo. Okay? Uh, but this theory though, it's not, uh, uh, hindi kasama dito yung tinatawag natin na pre-existing diseases. Okay? Ito yung mga sakit na natin even before we started working for our company. So, hindi po siya kasama sa mga binabayaran ni ECC. That's why congenital diseases such as heart disease, particularly the rheuma rheuma uh, rheumatic heart disease, hindi po siya pumapasok uh, under the EC program. Okay? So, very hot topic ngayon, especially in our uh, FB page. Ang dami namin na-receive na the questions, na clarifications about this question. Is COVID-19 compensable under the EC program? The answer is yes. Compensable po yung COVID-19 if nakuha po ni employee natin sa trabaho or sa working condition na meron po siya. Okay? So, especially now, yung mga frontline workers natin, yung mga healthcare workers natin, di ba, they are exposed to patients na merong, uh, na nag 
positive na because of COVID-19 and there's a high chance na matransfer din sa kanila yung virus. So, nagiging compensable po siya uh, for those kind of workers na meron tayo. Okay? Not just the healthcare workers, but other workers na vulnerable or, or nasa high risk din na makakuha ng virus, pwede pong pumasok sa programa ni ECC. Pwede mag-file at pwede mag-claim ng benefits namin. I keep on talking about benefits uh, Later, I'll be discussing ano ba exactly yung mga beneficyo na ito na pwede magkuha ng mga employees natin under ECC. Okay? But to answer this question, yes, it's compensable as long as work-related po yung pagkaka-infect uh, natin sa COVID-19. Okay? Okay, for, so for the injuries naman and resulting disability or death to be compensable, dapat yung injury must be the result of an accident arising out of or in the course of employment employee natin. There are eight instances na titignan natin para masabi natin na work-related talaga yung nangyari, aksidente, or yung injury na nangyari sa worker natin. Okay? So, I'm discussing this ah, kasi hindi lang po COVID-19 yung kinocover ni ECC. Okay? Other diseases, other injuries and accidents, as long as work-related po, pumapasok sa programa ni ECC. Okay? Pwede kayo mag-file at mag-claim ng benefits sa amin. Kasi a lot of times, ang tiyatanong sa amin, for COVID-19 lang ba yung programa na to? Hindi po for COVID-19 lamang yung EC program, okay? Any other uh, diseases or injuries, as I mentioned kanina, basta work-related, pwede po sa KECC, okay? So going back to compensable injuries, one, it happened at the workplace, and it happened while performing official function. Ang gusto lang sabihin po nito, dapat nangyari yung aksidente, na kung employee yung injury niya, habang ginagawa niya yung tra trabaho niya, official work ni employee, okay, nasa official workplace po siya, at official working hour, official working time, yung mangyari yung aksidente sa kanya. Okay? Para pumasok sa coverage po ni ECC. Our next instance, outside of workplace, but performing an order of his employer, ito yung kadalasan nasa meetings tayo, di ba? Or meron tayong mga official businesses na ginagawa outside of our company. At kung may mangyari po sa atin, while doing that official business, okay, instructed or ordered by our employer at may nangyari sa atin, compensable din po yun under ECC. It's just that for this instance, very crucial yung document na tinatawag natin na uh, official business memo, parang ganun or travel order, dapat meron tayong mga copies nun para masabi natin na official talaga yung ginawa natin outside of our workplace. Okay? Our next instance, going to or coming from work, kasama rin po sa programa ni ECC. Ito yung pagpunta ka pala sa trabaho or pauwi sa trabaho, may nangyari aksidente sa'yo. Okay? Covered po yun ni ECC. Yun nga lang, para pumasok po siya sa instance na to, dapat walang diversion dun sa ruta ni employee. Meaning, opisina, bahay, bahay, opisina lamang, yung naging ruta ni employee natin. Okay? Kasi kung nagkakaroon ng substantial deviation or substantial diversion from the route of the employee, mataas yung chances na madinay po yung claim niya under the EC program. Okay? Next, while ministering to personal comfort, ano ba yung mga personal comforts natin? Pagkain, during lunch break, di ba? Or pag inom ng kape, pag CR, pag ihi. Kung may mangyari aksidente sa atin habang nasa workplace tayo and doing these personal comforts of ours, pwede rin po yung pumasok sa coverage ni ECC. Pwede rin tayo mag-file ng benefits sa amin as long as walang notorious negligence na ginawa si employee. Okay? Hindi niya sinadya na gawin yung aksidente sa kanya para hindi po madina yung claim niya for ECC. Next is, while in a company shuttle bus, any service vehicle provided by the company, at may nangyari sa empleyado natin, habang sakay, siya, uh, habang sakay siya ng service vehicle ng company, compensable din po yan kay ECC. Okay? So pwede rin kayo mag-claim ng benefits sa amin kung may mangyari sa inyo. Our seventh instance, during a company-sponsored activity, so what are, uh, what are the company-sponsored activities ba na kadalas ang ginagawa ng, ng mga companies natin? We have team building, di ba? Or yung sports fest na tinatawag natin. Kung may mangyari sa mga empleyado natin habang nagpa-participate to these kind of activities organized or sponsored by the company, entitled po yung mga employees natin again to avail easy benefits provided na walang negligence yung employee natin while uh, participating to this kind of activities. Okay? Our last instance, that of an employee due to assault, for example, security guard, nakastation siya, naka siya sa place of work niya, tapos bigla may pumasok, binaril yung security guard na matay, whatever the motive is, yung pagpatay yung security guard natin, 
it can be compensable under the EC program. So yung beneficiaries niya, pwede mag-file at mag-claim ng EC benefits. Okay? So what are the accepting circumstances? Ano yung mga posibleng dahilan para hindi ma-approve yung EC claim natin? Una, intoxication po. Bawal na nakainom, da hindi pwede yung nakainom tayo yung nangyaring aksidente. Okay? Pangalawa, yung paulit-ulit na sinasabi po kanina, notorious negligence, walang matinding kapabayaan yung employee natin. Like for example, dapat uh, naka-PPE pala talaga siya tapos pinrovide naman ni kumpanya yung PPE niya at hindi niya sinuot. Okay? At nangyari yung aksidente, then there's a high chance na madinay po yung claim niya because of this circumstance, which is notorious negligence. Okay? Our last circumstance is yung willful intent to injure oneself for another. Ito yung mga suicidal, uh, suicide cases most of the time sa mga companies po natin. Okay? So kung kayo mismo yung kumitil sa buhay ninyo or kayo mismo yung nag-cause ng aksidente sa sarili nyo, then hindi po siya pumapasok sa programa ni ECC. Okay? So I hope klaro po yan sa atin. Alright, so let's now talk about the benefits. So kung may mangyari sa atin na aksidente, kung may mangyari sa atin na pagkakasakit, kung ma-infect tayo ng COVID-19 because of work, ano naman yung mga benefits sa pwede natin makuha kay ECC? Ito po yung mga benefits na binibigay natin sa mga employees natin. One, we have loss of income. We also have medical benefits. We have careers allowance, death and funeral benefits, plus rehabilitation services. Again, yung mga benefits po na to, hindi lang pang COVID-19, ha? Para at least klaro po sa atin. And these benefits in the private sector, particularly uh, yung loss of income natin, it's over and above the benefits that you're getting from SSS. Okay, so... Kung nag-file kayo ng sickness benefit kay SSS and it's work-connected, then you can file another EC sickness benefit. So ngayon, I think maximum of 600 yung sickness benefit uh, ni SSS, then kay ECC it's 480 pesos per day maximum. Okay? So kung work-related siya na na-classify, that's 600 plus 480. So 1,080 maximum yung sickness benefit claim na pwede makuha ng employee natin, again, if it's work-connected. Okay? So we have three types of disabilities. We have the temporary total disability, which is the sickness benefit equivalent pagdating po kay SSS. Okay? Uh, dito, binibigyan natin, as mentioned kanina, it's maximum of 480 pesos per day. In the government sector, it's 200 pesos per day maximum. Okay? And for these benefits, sickness benefit, uh, because of the exclusiveness of benefits policy ng GSIS po, uh, hindi po tayo nagkakaroon ng double compensation unlike those working in the private sector. So ano ba yung double compensation? Double compensation is if it's work connected, you can simultaneously avail uh, the SSS benefits and the EC benefits in the private sector. Okay? Sa atin sa government sector, again, because of that uh, policy exclusiveness of benefits, pumipili lamang po tayo kung anong sickness benefit claim. For example, yung kukunin natin. Will it be GSIS sickness claim? or easy sickness claim po. Okay, so yun yung difference uh, ng availment ng benefits uh, ni ECC pagdating sa private compared sa public sector. Okay? By the way, uh, marami rin kami na-receive na inquiries. Paano daw kung may sick leave credits pa si employee? Is it the same with SSS na dapat ubus muna yung sick leave credits ni employee bago siya makapag-avail ng sickness claim ni ECC? The answer is no. Okay? So kahit, kahit na kompleto pa yung sick leave credits natin, this is both for the public and private sector, pwede na po tayong mag-file at mag-claim ng EC benefits. Hindi po tinitignan ni ECC yung number of sick leave credits natin. Okay? So yun yung difference ni ECC uh, from the two systems. Okay? Another difference of ECC from the SSS in particular is kay SSS before we can start filing and availing their benefits, we need first to have premium contributions. Okay? Kung wala pa tayong premium contributions, then we are not entitled yet to avail their benefits. Kay ECC, first day of your work po, may nangyaring aksidente sa inyo. Okay? Covered na po yun ni ECC. Pwede na kayo mag-file at mag-claim ng benefits sa amin. Okay? So wala po tayong premium contributions na tinitignan pagdating sa availment kay ECC. Again, first day of your work may nangyari, pwede na po kayo mag-file at mag-claim ng benefits sa amin. Alright, next is permanent partial disability or yung PPD na tinatawag natin. Ito, for example, isang kamay natin na putol or a body part of ours na wala ng function, nagpo-fall po yan under permanent partial disability. And for disability, 
uh, ang binibigyan po natin, ang binibigay po natin is uh, pension most of the time per EC schedule po. Okay? Like for example, yung thumb natin na putol sa atin, that's equivalent to 10 months of pension. The index finger, that's 8 months of pension. The middle finger, that's equivalent to 6 months. The ring finger is 5 months and the little finger, that's equivalent to 3 months of pension. Okay? But for example, yung thumb natin na putol siya, you will only get the 10 months pension if sagad yung putol ng thumb natin. Okay? Or nagkaroon talaga ng total function loss. Okay? Kung hindi nagkaroon ng total function loss or hindi sagad yung pagkakaputol, in-evaluate yan ng mga doctors natin. So, depende sa function loss, depende sa haba ng putol, that's the number of months of pension na pwede mong ma-avail under, under the EC program. Okay? One leg, that's equivalent to 46 months of pension. One year, that, that's 10 months. Okay? Na na-pension na pwede natin makuha. We also have permanent total disability or yung PTD na tinatawag po natin. Ito naman, for example, both of your hands na putol or both of your legs na wala sa atin or dalawang mata natin na bulag at hindi na tayo pabalik sa trabaho, nagpo-fall tayo under permanent total disability. And for this disability, pension po yung napukuha, lifetime pension most of the time na pukuha ng mga workers po natin. And probably this is one of the benefits na hindi na avail most of the time ng mga employees natin. Kasi the moment they receive yung benefits nila from SSS, yung pension nila from SSS, akala nila yun na yun. Not knowing na if it's work connected, there's another set of, of pension na pwedeng makuha kay ECC. So in the private sector, dalawang pension actually yung pwede natin makuha if it's work connected. Pension from SSS and another pension from ECC. I'm saying in the private sector kasi kay, uh, kay public sector, Sa amin, sa government sector, pipili lang po kami kung anong pension yung kukunin namin. Will it be GSIS pension or EC pension? Again, it's because of the exclusiveness uh, policy, exclusiveness of benefits policy na meron tayo sa GSIS law. Okay? So, yun po yung difference natin. Alright. So, si ECC meron ding medical benefits na ibinibigay po. Ano ba yung mga kasama sa medical benefits? Yung hospitalization expenses, medicines, professional fees na ginagastos ng mga employees natin or employers na out-of-pocket expense na po nila, pwede po nilang i-reimburse yung kay ECC. Ito yung actually, na, ito yung actually hina-highlight namin ngayon kasi uh, with PhilHealth issuing yung categorization of benefits na binibigay nila for COVID uh, claims or COVID uh, victims natin, hindi na kasi full na shoulder ni PhilHealth yung expenses for uh, COVID-19, di ba? So, ini-inform natin yung mga employees natin, yung mga employers natin ngayon na kung, na kung work-related, work-connected, yung pagkakaroon, pagkakapositiba ni employee natin ng COVID-19, pwede po sila mag-file ng reimbursement for their hospitalization, medicines, professional fees, kung naglabas na po sila ng sarili nilang pera. Okay? So, again, kapag exhausted na po yung PhilHealth or yung HMO natin, that's the time na pwede tayo mag-file, mag-avail ng medical benefits ng reimbursement kay ECC. But our reimbursement, just so you know, it's not 100%. Okay? So, uh, dumidepende siya sa schedule or dun sa percentage na binibigay uh, ng system natin, depende sa computation na ginagawa po nila. We also have our cash assistance under the EC program. So, yung cash assistance naman namin, uh, this is part of the quick response program of ECC kung saan nagbibigay tayo ng agarang pinansyal na tulong sa mga empleyadong nagkakasakit or namamatay ng dahil sa, traba, ng dahil sa trabaho. Our cash assistance, okay, on top po ito ng sickness benefit claim na pwede natin makuha, yung medical benefits na pwede rin natin makuha kay ECC, on top pa po si cash assistance. Okay? For further information about the cash assistance, you can email us, you can message us on our Facebook page para at least mag-guide po namin kayo properly kung paano po ina-avail yung cash assistance na meron si ECC. Especially for the COVID-19 victims, okay? Uh, you can avail uh, our cash assistance. Alright, ECC also has death and funeral benefits. Again, this is one of the benefits na kadalasan hindi alam ng mga empleyado natin, okay? Kasi sabi nga kayo ba tulad sa permanent total disability, the moment they receive yung benefits nila, yung funeral benefits from SSS, yung death pension from SSS, sakala nila yun na yun. Not knowing if it's work connected, may ibang death benefits at funeral benefits pa pala na pwedeng makuha kay ECC. Okay? Our funeral benefits, it's 
funeral benefit, that's 30,000. Both public and private sector employees can avail the 30,000 funeral benefit if it's work-connected, okay? So, pagdating po dito, wala tayong titigyan na exclusiveness of benefits sa government sector. So, pwede nyo ma-avail both the GSIS funeral benefit and yung EC uh, funeral benefit, okay? As for the pension naman, that pension in the private sector, you can simultaneously avail the debt pension of SSS and ECC. Plus, of course, yung funeral benefits po natin. Sa government sector, pipili po ulit tayo. Will it be the GSIS pension or EC pension? Yung kukunin po natin. Okay, so yun na yung tinitignan natin pagdating sa government sector po. Okay. This is actually the program or service na very proud kami sa ECC na meron. Okay, kasi sabi nga natin para, ang sinasabi nga yung parate, for the two systems, if uh, the monetary equivalent of the contingency na nangyari sa atin is 50,000, then they just give you 50,000. After that, tapos na yung uh, usapan natin most of the time sa mga systems natin. Okay? KECC, if you need follow-up services, such as physical therapy, speech therapy, or occupational therapy, pwede po natin makuha yan ng libre KECC. Okay? Not just therapy sessions, but even assistive devices, such as prosthesis, ganyan, wheelchairs, crutches, and hearing aids, pwede rin po ma-avail KECC. The only requirement we're asking before you can start availing our re rehabilitation services is one, dapat nakapag-file po tayo ng EC benefit claim natin. At pangalawa, dapat approve po yung uh, EC claim po natin. Okay? So yun lang po yung kailangan nyo i-present sa amin. Yung approval ng EC claim nyo para makapag-avail po kayo ng rehabilitation services namin. We also provide free skills and entrepreneurial training with starter kit of 20,000 pesos plus the employees given 500 peso per day na transpoint mil allowance. Okay? This rehabilitation benefits is on top of the sickness claim medical benefits and cash assistance na binanggit ko po kanina. So, patong-patong actually yung mga services, yung mga benefits na pwede natin makuha if work connected yung nangyari sa atin. Okay? So, for COVID-19, uh, victims natin, yung mga workers natin na nakuha yung COVID-19 sa trabaho, they can avail of the sickness benefit, uh, sickness benefit uh, yung medical benefits natin, and yung cash assistance natin. And then for those na hindi pinalad, they can avail yung death and funeral benefits po natin. Okay? Alright, so how do we avail the EC benefits now? Ano ba yung proseso natin in filing and availing EC benefits? All you need to do is to fill up yung mga prescribed forms natin at, and attach these documents. Certificate of employment with job description. For COVID-19, kailangan po naka-indicate sa certificate of employment natin yung last day kung kailan nag-report si employee bago siya nag-positive sa COVID-19. Okay? We will also be needing the medical or hospital records, particularly the RT-PCR result ni employee natin if it's COVID-19. Kailangan po swab test yung ginawa kay employee natin. Okay? Uh, yung mga rapid uh, test result, hindi po siya uh, nire-recognize as of now ng ECC. Dapat swab test po tayo. Okay? Incident report for accident-related uh, contingencies and of course, yung EC logbook po natin. Okay? So, kailangan po na isubmit yung mga documents na to para maproseso yung claim natin for EC benefits. Alright, so ito yung itsura ng EC logbook natin kasi marami sa mga employees nagtatanong, ano ba yung EC logbook? Saan ba siya nakukuha? It's actually uh, a record lang of all the work-related contingencies na nangyayari sa opisina natin, okay? And these are the basic information na tinitignan natin sa logbook natin. Pangalan ni employee, kailan nangyari yung contingency, saan nangyari, what is the nature of the contingency, and number of days na wala si worker sa trabaho, okay? So napaka-importante na meron po tayong EC logbook sa kumpanya. Kasi kung wala tayong EC logbook sa kumpanya, it, uh, the employer can be subjected to penalty, okay? Uh, I think it's 50% uh, 50 lump sum equivalent anong benefit na makukuha ni employee natin. So kung 50,000 yung benefit na makukuha ni employee natin, tapos na patunay na wala tayong easy logbook, maghahati ngayon si easy siya yung employer dun sa benefit ni employee. 25,000 will come from the employer as penalty uh, for not maintaining an easy logbook and 25,000 will come from the easy program. Okay, so please make sure you have an easy logbook with you kasi mandatory requirement po to under the easy program. 
All right, so where do you file your EC claim? Ang filing po ng ECC hindi po sa opisina namin, okay? So wala po nag-file for EC benefit claims sa office namin, particularly for the sickness claim, death and funeral and medical benefits, okay? Sa public sector, ang filing po natin is a GSIS, nearest GSIS branch, and for the private sector, nearest SSS branch po yung filing po natin, okay? Kung nagkakaroon ng denial of claim, like for example, you filed uh, your claim kay SSS, tas na-deny siya, that's the time na pwede kayong pumunta sa office namin or lumapit sa office na namin if you would like to make an appeal of your claim kasi na-deny po siya ni, ni SSS or ni GSIS, okay? Uh, tapos kami na yung makipag-coordinate sa mga systems and we have our own set of technical review committee composed of doctors and lawyers checking and reviewing kung uh, pwede bang i-reverse yung decision ni SSS pagdating dun sa benefit ni, ni employee for ECC, okay? So kung for example, nakita ng technical review committee natin, it's work connected really, then we just order SSS uh, to reverse, uh, uh, reversing their decision of denying the claim and asking them to award still the benefit of the employee under the EC program, okay? But for example, sa office namin, na-deny pa rin. Ang next na pwede na po natin lapitan after ma-deny sa amin is Court of Appeals, okay? Kung sa Court of Appeals na-deny pa rin, Supreme Court na po tayo, okay? So yan po yung hierarchy pagdating sa processing of claims ng EC benefit, okay? But yung cash assistance natin, it's filed directly to our office, okay? Uh, again, you can message us on Facebook or you can email us. You can, we can give you the detailed instruction on how to avail our cash assistance. Okay, yung prescriptive period naman ni ECC, this is the good thing about ECC, okay? Tatlong taon po yung prescription natin, okay? So kung last year or two years ago pa nangyari yung contingency sa atin, tapos ngayon lang natin nalaman na pwede pala tayo mag-file at mag-claim kay ECC, pwede nyo pa rin po siyang mahabol. Pwede pa rin mahabol, makuha yung benefits natin as long as pasok do sa three years prescription natin. Ito yung isa sa mga differences ulit ni ECC from the, others, from the two systems kasi... For SSS, for example, di ba for sickness claim nila, I think within five to seven days, dapat filed na yung uh, sickness claim natin. Kasi pag hindi siya na-file, forfeited na po yung uh, sickness claim natin. Kay ECC, hindi po. As long as pasok siya sa three years prescription natin. Okay? May tinatawag din tayo na deemed filed. For example, five years ago na, na, na five years ago na, nung nangyari yung aksidente, or yung pagkakasakit ng employee na work-related, tas ngayon lang natin nalaman na may ECC pala, Check if you were able to file and claim your SSS benefits, for example, in the private sector, okay? Kasi kung na-avail yung SSS benefits nyo, considered filed na rin yung EC benefits po natin, okay? So kahit five years ago na nangyaring contingency, pwede pa rin po nyong ma-file, pwede pa rin makuha yung benefits natin under ECC. Kasi humihinto na yung prescription natin na three years pagdating sa deem filed na tinatawag po natin, okay? So I hope uh, this one is clear sa lahat ng participants natin. Okay, so every time we conduct presentation about ECC, we always say this sa mga participants namin, the ECP benefits are welcome, but again, di bali nang hindi ako mabiyaya ng employees compensation program, wag lang ako magkasakit or maksidente ng dahil sa trabaho. Tama po ba? Tama, di ba? Okay, sabi nga namin, uh, this is probably one of the government programs na ayaw natin. And even us in the office doesn't like the program. Kasi the moment na may pumunta dito sa office namin, isa lang ang ibig sabihin nun. Either may nagkasakit, may naaksidente, or may namatay ng dahil sa trabaho. At ayaw din po namin yun. Okay? But even if we don't like the program, it is still very important that we are aware of its existence. Dapat alam natin na may easy program pala na pwedeng lapitan, pwedeng hingan ng tulong aside sa SSS, GSIS, final pag-ibig, kung work-related yung nangyari sa empleyado natin. Okay? So I hope you can help us advocate, you can help us uh, inform your families or fellow workers about the existence of ECC and of the ECC program. So with that, maraming maraming salamat for, for listening and uh, again to NWPC for organizing this webinar, this learning session sa lahat ng mga employees natin na interested malaman kung ano at para saan si ECC. Okay, thank you very much, um, Sir Alvin Garcia, and um, very comprehensive yung presentation mo from um, 
about ECC, kung sino si ECC, and kung ano yung um, mga benefits na binibigay under the EC program as well as yung kung ano yung mga claims, specific claims na dapat makuha ng ating mga um, panggagawa na um, gusto mag-claim ng EC sa inyong opinion. So, at this point, um, we will have our Q&A. Before that, meron tayong trivia game. Para lang mag-relax <laughs> lang kayong lahat. Oh. So, para lang din makainom ng tubig si Sir Alvin ng kanyang... Um, ito yeah, kanyang... madami niyang questions yata, no? <laughs> yeah. Sir Alvin, wait lang. Pupunta tayo sa ating trivia game today. Hmm. Sige. Um, si um, ECC, meron silang sponsored na mga corporate giveaways na ibibigay sa ating mga lucky winners for today. So, meron tayong three trivia questions na ipa-flash. Uh, sorry, hindi ko pala ipa-flash. Ipapakita ko lang yung ating trivia game. And then, all you have to do is answer doon sa ating chat. So, meron tayong mga um, kasamahan sa NWPC na titingin kung sino yung unang makakasagot ng tama sa ating question. So, are you ready now? So, please type yes doon sa ating chat box kung ready na kayo sa ating three questions. Wow. <laughs> okay, mukhang ready na sila, um, Sir Alvin. Sige. Okay, for our first Question. Trivia question number one. Okay. Ready na ba? Ready na kayo? Okay, sige. Ito yung ating question number one. The Employees Compensation Commission was established in November 1, 1974. It is a government corporation attached to what executive de department? Please write the complete name of this executive department. Complete name. Okay. Meron nang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. The correct answer is Department of Labor and Employment. So, um, boom, if you are in the chat box, pakacheck lang kung sino yung pinakaunang nakapag-type ng Department of Labor and Employment. Gaya ng ECC, ang NWPC po ay attached agency ng Department of Labor and Employment. So, Let's go now to our question, um, trivia question number two. Okay. Ito, about COVID-19. According to data analysts, it is the only Philippine province without COVID-19 infections. Okay. The correct answer is Batanes. Sige. Um, maraming nakatamang sagot pero titignan natin mamaya kung sino yung um, pinakaunang nakatamang sagot. Okay, for our last quest, trivia question number three. Aside from loss of income, rehabilitation services, carers allowance, and death and funeral benefits, ano pa yung isang beneficyo under the EC program? Doon sa presentation ni Sir Alvin kanina. Okay. May nakakuha na ng tamang sagot. The correct answer is medical benefit. Okay. Sige. <clears throat> Mukhang may hirapan yung ating kasamahan sa chat box para malaman kung sino yung nanalo doon sa ating three trivia questions. Pero um, yung ating mga kasamahan na nagbigay ng kanila mga questions doon sa ating chat box kanina as well as doon sa ating Q&A. Meron din po kami pipiliin na dalawang mananalo ng corporate giveaways from ECC. So, punta na tayo doon sa ating question and answer. Okay. Hi, Sir Alvin. Kamusta po? Hi. Hi, Jerome. <laughs> Ito ko na ba sa mga questions natin? Ah, uh, siguro. <laughs> Medyo madami yung okay. questions natin eh, no? Uh, sige. Um, unang question dito. Um, in COVID-19 case po, how about yung asawa ng employees na nahawa po? Asali po ba sila? Asawa ng employee? What, what do we mean asawa ng employee? Like kasama sa bahay? Parang ganun? Yes. Siguro probably because of the work from home arrangement natin ngayon. Mm -hmm. Ganun na yung yung workplace nila ay yung bahay ng nila. So, marami nagtanong actually ng ganon. What if nahawa daw sila or yung, tama, nahawa sila 
dahil yung asawa nila ay COVID-19 positive. COVID-19 positive. Okay. So, pag mga ganong cases po, actually, medyo tricky siya na question. Okay? It's quite tricky uh, when it comes to evaluating if it can be compensable or not under the AC program. So, for those kind of instances, for those kind of cases, what we advise them is uh, to continue still yung filing nila ng EC benefits. Okay? Uh, we, we ask them to file for their EC sickness claim at yung cash assistance nila. Then we have our medical evaluators. We have doctors checking and reviewing kung pwede talaga silang pumasok kay ECC or not. Okay? So, pag ganun po mga cases, best really is to file and let the evaluators, let the experts do their job in evaluating if it can be compensable or not under ECC. Okay, follow-up question. Meron bang additional na ano, parang requirement para to prove na ganun yung ano, na parang... Nila. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most likely, for, not just for COVID-19, uh, even uh, I can see some questions here na, for example, na accidentally sila sa bahay kasi naka-work from home sila. We need uh, to know really first kung may policy ba talaga si company for a work from home arrangement ng mga employees natin. Okay? So, we will be needing that a policy or a document stating na inalaw ni company, inalaw ni employer na naka-work from home si employee natin. Okay? Then, for, for accident-related na mga contingency naman, we need to know anong klase ng accident yung nangyari sa employee natin. Kasi at itignan natin doon, dapat really walang negligence on the part of the employee. Kasi I remember we have a case before na yung teacher natin naka-work from home. Hindi siya actually naka-work from home. Okay? But because of the order of the employer na may kailangan siyang tapusin na document at uh, parang nung inooperate niya yung computer niya or a gadget na kailangan niyang gamitin sa trabaho, na kuryente siya, at yun nag-cause ng aksidente sa kanya, then pumasok pa rin siya uh, under the EC program. Okay? Pag mga ganong cases, pwede po. We'll be needing, of course, yung statement ng employer natin. Okay. So, how do you identify the whether it is work-related or not? Hmm? Meron bang ganong ano? Meron bang ganong investigation na ginagawa si ECC? Yeah, if medyo vague yung yung accident na nangyari, we have our team uh, from SSS or from our office as well uh, na gumagawa kung minsan ng investigation. Okay, sabi ko kanina yung technical committee natin, it's composed of doctors and lawyers as well uh, para tinitignan, uh, para tingnan specifically at mas detalyado yung case na employee natin. Kung pwede siyang pumasok or hindi kay ECC. As long as sabi ko nga kanya doon sa accepting circumstance natin, walang negligence on the part of the employee, uh, pwede siyang pumasok kay ECC. How do you inform, siguro follow-up question, how do you inform yung ating mga applicants doon sa EC program na sila ay um, makakapag-claim or hindi makakapag-claim? Actually, yan yung isa sa mga concerns namin, to be honest, kay ECC. Because uh, sabi nga kanya doon sa start ng presentation, still a lot of our workers, a lot of our employers, hindi pa alam yung benefits, hindi alam na may programa pala na ganito, yung gobyerno natin. That's why we really are very thankful to our partners in WPC, for example, for helping us uh, cascade yung information pagdating sa mga empleyado natin. Okay? Uh, recently, we, we, uh, we strengthened yung social media presence namin in Facebook uh, to be particular. Also in YouTube, we also have our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. We're also uploading yung mga videos namin. Then we just finished a radio program uh, sa isang uh, radio station. What else? We also conduct seminars, webinars regularly. And together with our implementing agencies, SSS, GSIS, DOLE also, uh, kasama tayo sa mga in-depth in-house seminars nila uh, for employees and employers at yung mga members po nila. Yun yung mga ginagawa natin na info campaigns uh, just to make sure na yung mga employees natin, yung mga workers natin alam na may beneficyo sila kay ECC just in case work related yung mangyari sa kanila. And recently also, we partnered with GSIS. So we are doing an uh, SMS campaign uh, sa public sector. We are still working our SMS partnership with SSS. So hopefully soon, uh, may implement din siya para at least mas marami pa yung workers na ma-reach natin. Okay. Sige. Ang next question natin, how long po ang processing ng easy claims? Okay, so <laughs> parang yun lagi yung tinatanong ng mga workers. Kano po katagal? Parang gano'n. Okay. Uh, actually, the standard, yeah, the standard, okay, kasi may bagong art at tayo, it's 21 working days. Okay? Yun din yung advice ng SSS sa amin. 
Within 21 days, dapat may decision na dun sa claim ni employee natin. Okay? But because of the situation na meron tayo ngayon, we're also asking the public for an extra patience kasi nag adjust and even us uh, in the government sector. Pagdating sa pagpuproseso ng mga benefits po natin under uh, not just with DCC, with the EC program, but with the benefits na binibigay din ng ibang agencies po natin. Okay? But we really are trying our best na ma-process at makuha niyo po agad yung mga benefits po ninyo. Sir Alvin, 21 days upon application ba ito? Upon application, kompleto. No, no, no. 21 days. Mag-start lang yung 21 working days ha, kapag kompleto yung mga documents po natin. Yung mga requirements na pinapasan natin. We have to take note of that. Kasi hindi po nag-start yung process cycle time natin, yung PCT na tinatawag natin, unless kompleto yung mga documents, yung mga requirements na kailangan natin isabihin. Okay. Ito maganda rin question nito. What if merong pre-existing um, condition daw yung employee tapos na-trigger daw yung another illness dun sa work. Dahil sa work. Paano ito, Sir Alvin? Another illness. Okay. Uh, dun, kanina, di ba nabanggit pa dun sa increased risk growing natin, hindi siya applicable for pre-existing diseases talaga. CECC. Okay, so uh, pag ganung cases, medyo kailangan na ng mga medical experts talaga to check gano ba ka kalakas or ka-strong yung uh, naging effect nung trabaho, parang ganun, or pa parang matrigger yung uh, another illness ni employee natin, parang ganun. Uh, a very good example of this is siguro yung asthma, kasi di ba si asthma, it's congenital also, uh, inborn kadalasan si asthma, di ba? So, pagdating kay asthma, pag na-classify siya as uh, uh, occupational asthma, okay, kahit na inborn siya, at Kahit na-inborn siya, pero na-classify siya na occupational asthma, pumapasok na po siya sa coverage ni ECC. Okay. Sige. Ang next question natin ay, sa ngayon ba, how do you consider yung work from home, Sir Alvin? Yung arrangement natin yung work from home. Paano siya tinitignan ni ECC as a workplace? Ganon. Mayroon ba kayong nilabas na rules on that? Uh, sa ngayon, wala pang uh, nilalabas na bagong guidelines sa ECC for the work from home arrangement ng mga employees natin. But it's being discussed now uh, in the commission kung paano yung magiging take, kung paano yung magiging approach uh, exactly ni ECC pagdating sa mga employees natin na naka-work from home. Okay? Basta ngayon, if there are uh, accidents na nangyayari, Habang ginagawa natin trabaho natin sa bahay, which is advice ng profile, at uh, meron naman tayong team at tumiting yan at nag-evaluate uh, ng mga claims po natin. Sa ngayon, how do you accept yung um, mga application form to online na ito? Tama ba, Sir Alvin? Okay, so for, for the processing or application ng benefits po natin, uh, for the sickness claim, medical benefits, death and funeral uh, claims, uh, it's being uh, applied still sa mga systems po natin. Okay? Uh, so ngayon, through drop boxes po tayo. So kung sa private sector tayo nagtatrabaho, kung private sector employee tayo, then KSSS po natin uh, fina-file yung benefits natin through drop box, then GSIS naman for the government sector through drop box as well. We are in coordination now with SSS also. Uh, Nag-develop na rin ng online system para sa filing ng EC benefits sa private sector para hindi na magiging drop box yung application ng mga workers natin for easy benefits. That's for the private sector workers po natin. Okay. May mga nalilito pa rin ngayon, Sir Alvin, kung yung easy claim ba nila ay different dun sa SSS claim nila. Can you forget? Yeah, nakita ko nga. <laughs> okay. Well, again, if it's work-connected, to be clear with everyone, yung easy benefits po, on top siya, ng SSS benefits po natin. Okay? Again, if it's work-connected, you get your SSS benefits, then you get another set of benefits from ECC. Okay? Uh, baka nalito sila kasi kanina I mentioned sa public sector, sa government sector, na hindi nagkakaroon ng double compensation sa atin, sa government sector, kasi pumipili lang tayo kung anong claim yung kukunin natin for directly the same benefit. Okay? Like for example, yung sickness claim nga na binanggit ko kanina, Either GSIS sickness claim or easy sickness claim 
na yung kukunin natin. Okay, that's for the public sector because of the exclusiveness of benefits na meron under the GSIS law. But that law, it does not apply sa ating mga workers sa private sector. Okay? So sabay niyo po pwedeng mag-claim yung SSS benefits at yung EC benefits. Magkaibang benefits po yun. Okay. Um, may I know the frequency or how often we can avail the EC benefits? In case you encounter, for example, two or more work-related accidents in a month or a year. Wala tayong maximum. Kung ilang beses kayo maaksidente, hindi yung number of claims na pwede niyo makuha. Pero wag naman sana, di ba? <laughs> Pero yun, just in case, per contingency po yung filing natin. So kung five times ka na accident, because of work, then you can file five times uh, sa EC benefits. Okay? But don't aim for that, okay? <laughs> okay, may mga nagtatanong dito, meron bang attempt si ECC na isama yung psychological illness dun sa coverage ng EC benefits? Okay, for psychological illness, may mga mental health uh, diseases natin. Uh, we are also in coordination now with our partner uh, agencies and OSHC as our sister agency as well. Kung paano yung magiging take uh, ni ECC for mental health disorders. Sa ngayon kasi, yung mga merong uh, post-traumatic experiences sa gera, for example, yung mga uniform personnel natin, again, na uh, sumasabak sa mga gera at nagkakaroon ng trauma after, sila yung mga nabibigyan natin ng benefits under the ECC program. Uh, for those kind of uh, disorders or diseases. But for example, sa private sector, yung may mga ano ba, anxiety, depression, ganyan, uh, medyo uh, pinag-aaralan pa po ng condition natin. Okay? But, but if you think na malakas yung uh, connection niya sa trabaho, nakuha talaga siya sa trabaho, then you just file for your easy benefits. Again, it will be evaluated naman by our medical professionals. Okay. Um, another question, can we request for seminars and other forms of formations related to ECC? So, meron ba kayong, paano ba sila mag invite sa ECC kapag gusto nila magkaroon ng orientation? Uh, yeah, uh, aside from uh, the webinars that we are initiating the ECC, you can also invite us if you want uh, to have an exclusive EC orientation for your company, for your employees. You can just... Uh, send us an invitation letter addressed to our executive director, Ki Madam Stella Banawis. Then uh, we will schedule uh, an orientation for your company. Okay? And, or if you want to join one of our webinars, you can just check our Facebook page. Uh, we also post regularly in schedule po ng mga free webinars po natin. Okay. Requirement daw ba na dapat nakapag-file sila sa SSS bago sila mag-claim ng EC benefits? Okay. Hindi po prerequisite ni ECC si SSS. Okay? Pwede nakapag-fire kayo ng ECC kahit walang SSS uh, benefits kayo na final. Okay? Sabi ko nga kanina, di ba? Uh, may mga uh, cases kasi na hindi ka pa pwede mag-file ng SSS benefits mo kasi you still have your sick leave credits. Di ba? Kay ECC pwede na po kayo mag-file. Okay? So, kung hindi kayo nakapag-file kay SSS because you still have sick leave credits, then file for your EC benefits. Again, hindi po prerequisite ni ECC si SSS in filing for EC benefits. Okay. Um, another question. Um, paano ba magiging covered? Uh, for example, kasi marami siguro ngayon yung um, nagtatrabaho sa food panda, for example. How can they be um, part of the EC program? Okay, yung mga delivery guys natin, oh, like food panda, a grab, lala move, ganyan. Wala silang employee-employer relationship. And most of the time, ang uh, membership categorization nila kay SSS is voluntary or self-employed. Okay? So, ngayon, kanina sabi ko nga, legally covered na po uh, yung mga self-employed natin. But we are still waiting for the system of SSS na maapat, maapat ma-implement po siya. Okay? So, once na ready na po yung system natin, uh, our self-employed members of the SSS can store can already start registering to uh, EC benefit uh, uh, ECC to the EC program. It's just that uh, sila of course yung magbabayad ng premium contribution nila, kasi sila na rin yung nagiging employer nila. Okay, so parang ganon kasi yung status or yung uh, situation ng mga uh, delivery guys natin, mga Grab drivers, ganyan, yung mga food panda drivers natin. Okay. 
So let's just wait for the announcement of ECC and SSS once ready na po yung system natin uh, na makapag-register po kayo sa ECC. And those who are not parang um, being given yung EC benefits, parang appeal for um, their claims? Pwede ba silang mag-appeal? Meron ba kayong ganong process? Yeah, yeah. If uh, yung appeal uh, yung appeal function ni ECC, pumapasok kapag may denial na uh, yung system natin. Like, you file for your EC benefits but it was denied by the two systems because you think it's not work connected, then you can file for appeals of office namin if you think na dapat papasok yung claim ko kay ECC. Okay? So, nire-review po yan ng technical review committee natin. At tinitingnan kung pwede talagang pumasok kay ECC yung uh, case or yung claim employee natin or hindi. Okay? But in the event, for example, baka yung question ni uh, yung question na galing sa participant natin, paano kung uh, ano ba, parang hindi ma-file kasi hindi kompleto yung documents or hindi supportive si employer, something like that. Or ayaw pirmahan yung uh, forms na kailangan or ibigay yung mga documents na kailangan. You can ask for our assistance also. You can email us, you can send us a letter uh, asking for the assistance of ECC management to coordinate with your employer para mabigay yung mga okay. documents in processing uh, your easy benefit claim. So we can also okay. do it. We can also assist you for getting to them. Okay. Is there a possibility though na parang madenay sila sa SSS pero si EC hindi or the other way around? Parang ganun. Uh, okay. Yung first question, pag madenay kay SSS, may possibility na madenay kay SSS. Yes. Okay. Uh, kaya sa office namin dito sa DC, may mga cases pa rin talaga na umaakyat regularly. Uh, Ina-app nila kasi na-deny nga siya kay SSS. Okay? But yung second question, parang in-approve ni SSS pero dininay ni ECC, something like that. Uh, parang wala pa namang ganun. Basta approve na kay SSS, then good to go na po yan. Oh, magandang question ito. For asymptomatic COVID-19 case and home confinement lang daw siya, paano siya, paano yung process ng claim niya? Yeah, for asymptomatic employees but like positive to COVID-19 through RT-PCR, you can still file and avail your benefits under ECC. Okay? Uh, same process, can you uh, know through SSS for the uh, private sector and you can also file for your cash assistance. Sa amin. Just, just message us whoever asked that question in our Facebook page or you can email us ipod.ecc.gov.ph so we can guide you uh, kung paano yung processing ng cash assistance natin. Yung cash assistance natin, it's filed online naman na. Online filing na tayo doon. Tama no, Sir Alvin. Same lang yung process cycle time ninyo. Kahit um, sila ay nasa Manila at nasa sa ibang party ng Pilipinas. Yes, sir. Same, Same. lang po. Okay. Um, regarding po sa pag-claim ng amount, sino po nagpa-process? Directly po ba siyang mag-claim sa SSS or private sector or si company ang need na mag-cash advance like SSS sickness benefit? Okay. Actually, we don't have a hard rule for that. Okay? Uh, if the employer is willing to advance uh, yung EC benefit ni employee, pwede naman po yun. Okay? Uh, but again, sabi nga natin, wala tayong hard rule for that. And like the SSS kasi, para reimbursement mo yun ang nangyayari. Uh, si employer yung nag advance tapos nire-reimburse na kay SSS. Parang ganun. Kay ECC, prerogative po ni, ni employer. If gusto niyang i-cash advance, i-advance uh, yung EC benefit ni employee or not. Okay. Um, next question. Our employee has been hospitalized for almost a month due to COVID-19. How can we able to file for SSS and EC if the hospital cannot provide the original copies? They only release the photocopy of all hospital documents. Uh, a certified true copy na lang po natin yung mga documents. If ayaw pang mag-release na or kasi hindi pa bayad, parang ganun. Mm, Just for a statement, yeah, or yung mga uh, documents sa certified true copy na lang po ng hospital for the meantime. Kasi, yeah, marami kami nare-receive na ganyan. Kasi nga, di ba, ang taas ng hospitalization expenses ng mga workers natin, ng mga uh, fellow Filipinos natin na nagpa-positive sa COVID-19 at na-hospitalize, uh, that's, that's one of their concerns. Kasi exhausted ang health benefits nila. Tapos, uh, nagamit na rin yung HMO benefits, tapos, pero may malaki pa silang bago sa hospital. So yun yung struggle nila lagi. Okay? 
uh, just ask for for a certified true copy ng mga documents na muna. And of course, you need to file your sickness claim then take it. Okay, kasi before you can file for medical benefits for reimbursement, dapat approve muna po yung uh, sickness claim natin uh, for ECC. Does ECC conduct interview dun sa mga applicant pa? Interviews. If there is a need to, then we uh, subject them for interviews. But most of the time naman, yung mga document are requirements natin. Uh, those are enough. Uh, kung yun yung mga hiningi ng mga evaluators natin, either yung mga doctors or lawyers natin at nabigay naman, and they are satisfied already with those documents, then there's no need for uh, an interview with, with the applicant or with, with, the, with the victim, with the employee. Are there any other um, needed documents for COVID-19 um, patients or um, yan on, mga applicants na COVID-19 positive? COVID -19. Yeah, uh, ang crucial lang, we have a template for the Certificate of Employment. Uh, message us so we can uh, forward to you yung uh, format natin for the Certificate of Employment. But just so you know, uh, ang crucial lang sa Certificate of Employment natin ngayon is yung last day of work ni employee bago siya nag-positive sa COVID-19. Okay? So yun yung uh, important uh, information na dapat nakalagay po sa Certificate of Employment natin. And of course, uh, yung lab result natin, yung RT-PCR result natin na nag-positive tayo sa COVID-19. Okay. Um, paano doon na-receive ng mga employees yung kanilang EC benefits? Paano, ano yung proseso? For example, <laughs> uh, ano ba ito? Cold cash ba ito? Nag-cold fashion pa kami. Through checks pa rin po tayo. Okay? Uh, especially for the cash assistance, it's uh, through check. Once it's approved and it's ready for release, then we just inform the worker, we just info, uh, inform the employer, and they're ready for pickup na po yung check and happen. Okay? Uh, for the sickness claim naman, ganyan, medical benefits, uh, through the systems, it's still checked. Okay? Unless it's uh, uh, being reimbursed by the employer kasi nag-advance na siya. Then kinikredit na lang directly sa employer po natin. Okay. Saan daw po makikita yung mga online services niyo, Sir Alvin? Saan makita yung online services namin? You can check our Facebook page, our website. Uh, nakalagay naman po doon yung mga activities, yung mga services na meron po tayo. Okay. Sige. May mga questions pa ba? Sir Alvin, tulungan mo ako. Baka meron ka gustong masagot ng mga question dito sa ating chat. Um, okay. May question dito. Kung voluntary tapos two years, nagiging katulog ng SSS, hindi po ba siya qualified for ECC? Okay, unfortunately, mga voluntary members po natin, they are not yet covered by the EC program, okay? Uh, kung kayo ay self-employed, then you just need to uh, apply for EC. Uh, you just need to register yourselves sa EC program once ready na po yung system natin. Okay, but as of now, so medyo maghintay, hintay muna po tayo ng announcement ng ECC at ni SSS. Okay, anong form po yung gagamitin sa pag-file ng COVID claim? Uh, for sickness claim, it's the same uh, form na ginagamit natin oh. for other contingencies. It's form 30309 or, or EC sickness notification form. The form can be downloaded from SSS website and from our website as well, uh, ecc.gov.ph. Uh, sa Facebook page namin, we uploaded a frequently asked questions na mga infographics na nandun po naka-indicate specifically uh, at detalyado kung paano po yung processing at claiming natin ng easy benefits pagdating po sa dalawang systems po natin. Okay, so you can check that one. Nakalagay doon kung ano yung mga forms na kailangan i-submit, kailangan i-fill out at kung saan po makikita yung mga forms po na yun. Okay. okay. I, I saw a question a while ago kanina, paano daw sa government sector, for example, government employee, pero hindi siya mandatory member ng GSIS, so hindi siya makapag-claim. Ganyan. <laughs> uh, medyo madami tayo na-receive ng mga ganyan concerns din. Okay. For government employees, ito yung yata yung mga parang uh, outsource, ganyan, or yung mga job order employees natin, uh, you can apply uh, ng membership kay SSS, a self-employed, okay? So yun yung uh, pwede natin gawin. Mag-apply tayo kay SSS, a self-employed, then pag-ready system, then 
apply also for ACC. Okay? Sa ngayon kasi sa government sector, yung mga mandatory members din ng GSIS yung kinocover po natin. Okay? But for example, yung mga outsourced employees natin, yung mga agency hired employees, okay? Yung employer po ng mga agency hired employees natin, of course, is yung agency na nila. Okay? So, sila na po yung nag-ask kasa ng SSS benefits nila. Then, qualified kayo. Qualified kayo, entitled kayo to avail benefits kay SSS. Kasi dun yung membership natin. Oh, um, ano pa bang question nila dito? Okay, pwede pa rin po ba mag-claim ng easy benefits kung 8 months sagaw na yung aksidente? Definitely. As mentioned kanina, 3 years po yung uh, prescription po natin. Okay? Kung nag-lapse na yung 3 years, check if you were able to file and claim your SSS benefits. Kasi if you were able to do so, our prescription of 3 years stops already. So kahit 5 years ago pa nangyari yung aksidente, you can still file and claim your easy benefits. Okay? Another question, Pauline, Marie Pauline, who holds the EC logbook and who files the claim? Okay. Pagdating po sa EC logbook, it can be, uh, most of the time, it's the HR or admin officer. If you have your safety officers or yung mga nurses natin, sila po kadalasan yung humahawak at nagme-maintain ng EC logbook. Again, it depends on the policy that you have in our respective companies. Okay? But most of the time, sila po yung may hawak ng logbooks. Who files for the EC claim? It can be the employer, it can be the employee. But an advice from SSS, because we had uh, a meeting with them last week, uh, yung pag entertain most of the time is through employer pa rin. So if you are employed, best to force your, uh, your filing through your employer. Kasi mas alam din ng mga employers natin kung ano yung mga documents at yung mga forms na gagamitin. Especially uh, yung mga HR officers natin. Maraming mga HR officers na yung participants ngayon. So, I hope our HR officers can help their employees in uh, assisting their, employee, uh, their employees pagdating sa filing at claiming po ng mga benefits po nila. Under the ACP. Sir Alvin, may ibang mga nagka-question. What if ayaw i-file ng mga HR nila? <laughs> what if ayaw i-file ng mga HR? That's the time you can go to our office or you can go to SSS and seek for your assistance. Just let us know na uh, ayaw or hindi cooperative sa employer natin in filing your benefit claim, then we'll do the job for you. Uh, we'll coordinate with your employers, uh, with your HR officers. So, yung nagiging concern kung bakit ayaw i-file yung benefit claim po natin. Okay. Sir Alvin, saan daw nila i-email yung kanila mga questions? Aside from Facebook, sir, saan pa sila makakapag-reach out sa ECC? Hmm. You can email us at ipad.ecc.gov.ph. I'll... Type it sa, ano, sa chat box natin. Ayan. Nandiyan din po si Miss Eunice de Guzman from ECC. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Eunice. Thank you for joining me. Sumasagot din siya kanina yata. Uh, yeah. You can also call us dito sa office. Our hotline is 896-7837. 8896-7837. Okay. Sure, pwede ba kami humingi ng copy ng presentation? I forwarded my presentation to NWPC. So, yeah. Yes. Um, yung atin pong um, presentation will be forwarded to those who registered and attended as well as doon sa mga sasagot sa ating evaluation form mamaya na ipa-flash namin dyan. So, um, thank you very much, Sir Alvin, for joining us in our first learning session for this year. Virtual learning session ito, Sir Alvin. So, we hope that um, our participants learn so much from your presentation. And also, sana yung mga participants natin ay mag-claim ng mga benefits when needed. Pero sana naman, gaya na sinasabi ng um, ECC, wag naman sana tayong magkasakit or maka-encounter ng mga problema sa um, ating mga trabaho. So, um, this ends our um, Q&A portion. So, again, thank you very much, Sir Alvin. And um, in behalf of um, Executive Director Chris, Director Patty, and Director Jing, and the rest of our um, officers, um, thank you sa pag-tanggap um, sa aming invitation. So, sana may part 2 pa tayo dito dahil 3,000 yung mga nag-participants. Yes. As of today, Sir Alvin, merong, um, ito rin yung kauna-unahang Facebook Live namin. So, merong, kanina tinignan ko merong 1,200 na nanonood sa atin. So, iba pa yung mga manonood kapag nag-replay tayo sa ating YouTube. So, for those who haven't um, uh, reach our Facebook, uh, sorry, our Zoom um, webinar today. Pwede kayong makanood doon sa ating 
um, YouTube channel na nilaunch namin kanina. So, again, thank you, Sir Alvin, and sa ating mga participants. At um, at this point, um, i-reveal na natin yung mga winners natin doon sa ating game kanina. So, for um, trivia question number one, ang ating winner ay si Miss Leslie May Cortez. So, doon sa ating um, evaluation form, malalaman namin yung email ninyo and we'll email you how to claim your prizes from the ECC. Um, so for the question number two, ang ating winner ay si um, Christian Nicole Young. And for our third um, question, si Ms. Bianca Pauline Sumayo. So congratulations sa inyong lahat for um, answering our trivia questions. And for um, those who participated doon sa ating um, Q&A, um, meron din po kaming bibigyan ng premyo. Isa dito ay si Ms. Victoria Pamplona. Um, congratulations po. And lastly, I see um, Christine Mandak. Okay? Congratulations again for um, winning yung corporate um, giveaways ng ECC. Okay. So, um, we'd also like to take this opportunity to invite everyone to join us in our um, National Productivity Conference. It is now a webinar series. So, um, with the title, Driving Productivity in the Better Normal. So, please register it lang dito sa ating um, shortened link na bit.ly slash 2020 underscore NW, uh, sorry, NPC. So, mag-register lang po kayo dyan. It will happen from September 3 next week to November 5. Every Thursday po yan, 10 a.m. to 11.30. So, you have to register at least five sessions para magkaroon po kayo ng certificate dito. So, ito po yung mga topics namin. Um, on September 3, September 10, and September 17, um, Philippine Program for Recovery with Equity and Solidarity with Speaker Under Secretary Rosemary G. De Leon. Um, on September 10, Automating Workplaces in a Better Normal with Under Secretary Rafaelita Aldaba. Um, on September 17, Technology Enabled Solutions Mitigation to Recovery with Executive Director Enrico Paringit of um, Pichard, DOST. On September 24, Future of Work in a Healthier and More Resilient Environment with Speaker Mr. Hideki Kaguga, Kagohashi um, from um, the ILO um, Manila. On October 1, Employment Outlook Transitioning to a Better Normal with Mr. Sangyon Lee um, of ILO Geneva. And October 8, um, Actionable Intelligence Results Amidst Uncertainty, Mr. Keith Carter from NUS, or National University of Singapore. Um, on October 15, business reconfiguration, leading practices to transitioning to the new normal with uh, Ms. Jasmine Flores, founder and CEO of um, Leadworks Business Solutions. And um, October 22, employee engagement, leading practices, transitioning to the new normal with Mr. Shan Santuwa of um, Johnson and Johnson. And lastly, on November 5, um, 2020, leading uh, automation, leading practices, transitioning to the new normal with Ms. Eloisa Romaraog of um, Session Groceries. Okay, so at this point, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us uh, um, in our um, learning session. So. Uh, Doon po sa ating chat box ay ilalagay po ni um, Boom ang ating um, evaluation form. So please answer that within um, 15 minutes so that you can claim your certificate of participation on Monday, starting Monday. So um, ipapadala din po namin sa inyo yung presentation ni Sir Alvin as well as yung I aming mean, IEC materials na pinipare para sa inyo. So... Um, dito po nagtatapos ang aming learning session. We hope that you learned so much from our um, learning session today. And again, thank you to Sir Alvin. Sir Alvin, thank you. Um, sana may party pa tayo dahil maraming nag-register na hindi nakadalo sa ating um, learning session. In behalf again of the National Wages and Productivity Commission, thank you for joining us today and see you in our next sessions.
So, attend po kayo sa aming NTC, sa National Productivity Conference, as well as sa mga susunod pa naming learning session this year.